And then my only relief from that, those unspeakable horrors, which again, you know, in this, in this world, five minutes of it, you'd be absolutely dead. But this, you would endure and endure and endure. The only relief was even worse. I saw these big, the only light was these big walls of fire that would just pass through. Those demons, oh, Jesus, those demons were not chained down as I would have been, but they could have, they would have come and gone when uh, the fire went through. But, and then I would have just been completely burned. And you know, just like the Twin Towers, you know, like how awful it was that, that they jumped um, from that height to just not experience any of the fire, that, that jumping and, and experiencing that is more tolerable than that, that fire. So that, completely demonic torture it was no more tolerable than that fire even the demons couldn't they couldn't have stand it and they were getting like their last jabs in literally um, before I knew something even worse was going to happen I just knew because you know we have a scripture says we have an anointing from the Holy One and we know all things you know children they just know the who they can trust who they can't it's it's our, their spirits are alive and that's how we're to be when we're totally you know sa when we're saved and our soul our mind will and emotion we're all cleaned out no more demonic no more infiltration when we're when we're just Christians as God intended we just know things and how much more when we're in those other spiritual realms and that was Did you see other people in hell? No. Just the demons and the fire and the cages. That is what I saw and then when I um what I was with a girlfriend and she kept, she kept laying hands on me and she had she seen she had gone through that um church service that I disobeyed the call and she said, "Lord, you were supposed to." And I said, "I know, I know." I said, "Fight. Please pray. Please pray cuz I was going back and forth between realms." She called our church um and the a, a pastor that was on call um she finally said, Lori, I'm calling the church because this had gone on several hours, this fight and this wrestling for, for my soul. And um, he prayed and something broke. And the de I don't know what agreement happened, but that demon had to let go of me, that monster demon. And I, I went back in this realm and I was, we just cried together and we were just shaking. And that was how I saw hell. I never, it was, it's, it's like saying that, being addicted to pornography would make you have a better marriage. It's absolutely not true. Going to hell and seeing hell does not make you more spiritual. Go, seeing any of these things, it was something that God never intended. But because it's there, you can deliver other people out of it. Because you might have been addicted to pornography, you know the way back home to Jesus to be cleaned out. Did you also go to heaven, you said? Yeah, yeah. When... um. Can I, can I just praise God? It's like, yes, praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. I can see the intensity because you've been there. You've seen it. It's so real. And a lot of times when you know the darkness and see the darkness, then it's it's so clear. It's so obvious. I mean, sometimes when we're in our bodies in this physical realm, you know, we get those thoughts, but we don't literally know there is literally a demon speaking to us or literally there's a demon that has control over us. And even you talked about the spirit of suicide. Literally, it's a spirit that is just depressing you to such a degree and taking away your joy and you have no hope, you have no faith, you have nothing to live for. And it's literally this spiritual realm that this demon has to go so that you're free from this spirit of suicide. I mean, Jesus cast out the spirit 
of infirmity. And that's why I cast out the spirit of infirmity. You know, the woman touched the hem of his garment. Power, power to cast out that spirit of infirmity was released. So we need the power of God. But you've had such a revelation of the darkness. It gives you an even greater revelation of the light. And it's like you want to you know, tell people, but they don't see it because, oh, it's okay, you know, oh, abortion's okay, or, oh, it's okay, pornography, or, you know, addiction or, to drugs or alcohol or all those different things. Oh, it's okay, we can do whatever we want, but you, they don't realize there is a judgment, there is a hell, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, that the fire is not quenched, the worm does not die, and it's eternal torment, and it's that they're mocking and they're making fun of the Christians. But when they see that darkness, when they experience hell, everything's going to become real to them. And they're going to wish they had listened to that Christian brother or that Christian sister who was trying to talk to them about the Lord. And you're talking about pride. You know, that is the key. Lucifer fell from heaven because of his pride. And that is the key. It's, it's that pride, whereas with the Lord, it's humility. It's the fruit of the spirit, the humility, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the godliness. Whereas with Satan, it's that power and control and domination, that Jezebel spirit, just that that darkness of, of look at me rather than look at the Lord. So do you feel like you could tell us a little bit about heaven? Heaven or yes. okay, heaven is nice. <laughs> Do you know what healed me so much from the trauma? Because where can you go? What like what twelve step group or what you know to recover? Of this is a, a group of people who've been to hell and need to recover from it. It doesn't exist, right? So Jesus came to me and He would just visit me with His precious Holy Spirit, and there would just be sometimes the my my bedroom would just fill up with such a glory of god and just this absolute sweetness and it, he just infused me with the holy spirit you know for all, all these years that i've been saved he would just visit me and then he immediately put me into ministry can you believe that within three months i i preached my first sermon in a prison god sent me for my first ministry experience i said god i i this is not a good idea i went into a men's maximum security prison and i was in my you know volunteering through my church so it was a group and protected and, and all that but it was 300 men that you know had every kind of i mean i knew everything and immediate and then what happened is god just came with the holy spirit was like a like a bomb of goodness dropping and god said you don't have anything to be afraid of it's like a total dominion we're not here to coexist with darkness we're here to take over and i was like what have I been missing? You know, when I got saved, I felt like a princess from a different kingdom, which is how every lady should feel, which is every gentleman should feel like a prince. And it's just been this this holy adventure. And he would just come with his power and he would just move in these supernatural miracles. And I started serving in street evangelism. And then for two very large ministries, I've been very privileged to lead and develop street evangelism and healing teams in the last um, position that I was in we even were starting a resurrection outreach because one day the Lord was and that's what healed me just living in the glory of God absolute glory he would just he would catch me up sometimes in into heavenly places and and just and I would just see different things like um, once I saw he let me see like you know, it sounds, maybe it sounds cheesy or something, but it's real, you know, like, is it, you know, Disneyland has like the big castle and then there's like, a, and I just saw that, that that's the kingdom of God, you know, like, like the movie Narnia and I, I, my spirit is, even though I've seen and experienced all these things, I'm really like that character Lucy, like the little Lucy, that's how my relationship is with the Lord. I just feel like he's this big lion and he just comes and I just like hang out with him. And 
and he just talks with me and he shows me different things in the spirit. So many times when I'm ministering to people, I just tell everything that God did for me and they're like, wow, well, I'm not that bad. I'm like, nope. <laughs> just cast the devil out of you and let's um once you know after um i had gone through i had gone through a serious sickness too when i was going forward in television i was going right back into my calling can you believe this it's a diagnosis from the mayo clinic seven joints in my body came apart my i was a marathon runner all of it i'm telling you i have been through it and I am still here, and Jesus is Lord. And God, I was, I was training for a marathon, and my knees came apart, my shoulders, elbow, and uh, seriously, for a time I had to dress up like Forrest Gump when he was a little boy, you know, with those braces. That's not a good look for any lady, right? That's not a good look. And so, and in that condition, God said, you know what's the, you know the truth. You can do this man's way, or you can do it my way. And I'm, this is what he said. Again, I saw a choice in the spirit realm. Man's way was I was crippled, I was deformed, and I saw a coffin with my name on it. Again, all Satan wants is to kill, steal, and destroy. But it, And Jesus said, or we go into the healing ministry. And I said, okay, your way's better. <laughs> your way's much better. And there's no braces or we're healed. Nothing. Yeah. Just in the last year, we've seen four people get out. Of, my heart is to impart to others. And so I've led large teams of like 150 people. It's really like, you know, little churches almost. And just empower all of them to walk in miracles. And then I said, hey, guys, this is what's happening. And so we're just going to go into Walmarts. We're going to go wherever. We're going to go find institutions and pray for. And that's what we did. And God said, I'm going to heal you as you bring healing to others. Praise God. That's yeah. beautiful. Let me ask you a question. Um, people who have really experienced the darkness, evil spirits, witchcraft, psychic, they've been involved in that. Then they come to know the Lord. They've, they've received deliverance. But I found a lot of times that still the voice of darkness can still speak to them, that they really have to be rooted and grounded in the word because sometimes they can't go by what they hear or even dreams that they have because a lot of times the enemy tries to attack their mind and the power of God in them at that point has not overcome a lot of the darkness. Does that make sense? Yes. Like a lot of times, um, like if you serve God all your life, it's still difficult to hear his voice, but you hear it and you can trust it and it's based on the word of God. Whereas a lot of people who have been into witchcraft may get like really funky dreams or really funky words that you really just have to throw out as the enemy or the flesh and just go with like reason. Yes, exactly. Everything that you're saying, the, the strongest thing that immediately God said, go to Bible school. And so I, I am a, a product of the word of faith, you know, that, you know, strong doctrine of the, the word of God, um, speaking the word and it's, it's just foundational truth and not being led by, um, obviously, I'm, yes, or feelings or sensations or dreams, because when you know the word of God, you can immediately discern if something is of God or if it's not. But then obviously I'm very, you know, have been able to experience a lot of prophetic and dreams and visions and all of that. And cause he wants all of that for us. Just because Satan twists something doesn't mean it's all bad. That's like saying, well, I need to lose weight. So I'm just not going to eat anything. Well, that's not wisdom. You know, that's not how right. God designed it. Right. We just need to be in balance. But, but the strongest caution that I, um, or the caution that sounds negative, it's, it's a positive thing. The, the greatest advice that I would give for somebody, because um, I've gotten to minister and see healing of a, many schizophrenics, bipolar, you know, people hearing voices in their head, as well as people in witchcraft, Satanism. Actually, I work a lot with people coming out of alternative lifestyles and, and other religions as well. Um, so I, I love to minister um, you know, however, but that's what, how, how God used me a lot and growing in new body parts. <laughs> Seriously. Praise God. Yes. I know, really. <laughs>
and then training them to do a healing ministry. It's like when Satan attacks you, he's got to pay, man. Ooh, he does. You're getting him back. Yeah, Jesus is getting him back. So, um, so about the voices and kind of that weird warfare things. Yes, some of that stuff um, can be real, but this is what Satan does. He huffs and he puffs, and he's what was his job in the kingdom of God? He was like the. Yeah, and in performance arts and, you know, being here in Hollywood and, and around a lot of the arts community. And, and you know, something really affected me of, of um, doing some street witnessing uh, on Hollywood Boulevard. I saw celebrity impersonators, and I, I my heart just went out to them. And they... they does that, they were try they were making a living off of being somebody else when it wasn't God made them special yes. just as they are yes. and not that I mean I know it's a side job for some and you know God can call and it's it's entertainment it's I understand what you're saying though. but that's how Satan is he lost his he's counterfeit everything about him is counterfeit he lost his performing arts he lost his actor job he's 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 kicked out jesus triumphed over him making a show of him openly so he huffs and he puffs and um so that's one dynamic of satan knowing that he likes to twist things and, and his only identity is what he was right and he can only impersonate god but he's not the real thing but now that i've met you and now that we t we've talked i know your voice I know the sound of your voice. And the more that we would talk or know each other, maybe like if we hadn't talked for a year, I'd hear your voice and go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember. You know, we'd talk on the phone and go, oh, yeah, I remember you. Is its voice. But if we talked every day or if we talked several times every day, I would know your voice. Even if there are the other people that are in the room here, if I heard their voice, I'd still go, that's not your voice. I know your voice. So the, the more time that you spend with the Lord, um, the more time that you do, because then Satan will try to steal the spirit realm from you if you, you've been in it in a wrong way as I was. So I just said, no, I'm learning prayer. And I got to learn prayer under some of the most um, powerful mothers of prayer internationally respected. And so I, I go to uh, um, prayer meetings, corporate prayer every morning to learn how to pray. What is God and what isn't? Because I didn't know. I'd learn the Word of God, and I'd be in small prayer groups, d different ladies. So they, I would, I would learn, and and I would be like, well, this is what I feel like I'm getting from the Lord. Is that right? And um, then you know, then that refined my ability to hear the voice of God and, and a stranger's voice. I, I, you can know and not follow. But then also the third thing. So you know. Satan's a celebrity impersonator, and then we know the voice of God, and then the other thing is getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is absolutely life changing. It is powerful. It's like if I, when I'm street witnessing a lot, I'll run into soldiers and they, they may say, I'm saved and this and that. And I'm like, well, do you want the, do you want the other gift? I'll say the baptism. And they're like, oh no, I don't need that. And I said, wait, you're a soldier and you're going into Iraq or this or this place. I said, well, that's great. It's honorable. So it's honorable that you're saved. But if you were being, if you're going as a soldier to this country and you didn't have a gun, how long would you last? And they're like, well, I would never do that. I said, exactly. Why? The, this is my thought. Why would you be a Christian if you have all of the spiritual weapons and gifts that God gave to you and not use them? So that is so powerful. And it's like when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you shall receive power. And so, so that drives those works of darkness away. Praise God for his power working in you. It's Your testimony is just so heartfelt. It's so touching. And I know it's going to minister to so many people listening. And it's just so interesting. You've experienced the darkness firsthand. And now you're experiencing the light. And your eyes were open to the darkness. And you have a real revelation regarding that. And I praise God for your word, your testimony to really warn people that there is is a hell and that there is a judgment and it's not going to be pretty it's not going to be fun it's not going to be partying with your friends and drinking it's going to be uh, agony eternal agony and pain 
Oh, Lori, this has been such a great show. Thank you so much. I just love you so much, and I praise God for what he's doing in your life. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. You have a book. My book, you can see it. Um, it it's Saved from Hell, and that has the, the graphics in it. I have a website. It's my name. It's my LoriHeider.com. It's L-O-R-I, and my last name is Heider, H-A-I-D as in dog, E-R.com. Beautiful. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you, and I love you. You take care. How did you become a pastor? Well, uh, I became a pastor. God had to get a hold of my life. Um, Got to get a short version of this. My father was killed before I was born, and my family, they were not the best people. That I kind of con- I kind of compared them with the Adam family. However, the Adam family was more unified. Um, I've never seen such argumentative, mean people. I, I couldn't believe it. So when I was old enough to run away, believe me, I ran away. You know, so I, but unfortunately, when I ran away, I wound up getting with uh, a bunch of gang members and drug dealers and and all these pimps and killers. God knows what they're going to teach you. But you thinking you're getting the love that you want to get, but it's really a lie. they just lying to you, using you, because you're thinking you get some love that you're really not getting. So then once you get used to uh, selling drugs, getting fast money, God, thank God, he, i never been on drugs like that, but I, we sold enough. And sometimes, believe me, being hooked on selling it is just as bad as being on it. Because when you're hooked on selling it, now it's like you used to a certain life, you know, you used to fancy this, fancy that, VIP. When you get used to that life, it's hard to go to a minimum wage job. You really have to humble yourself. So, and then I almost got killed four times in one night behind something somebody else did. But those are your friends, so you got to stick with your friend. That's your homie. And I um, almost got killed by the police again because they are friends. <laughs> so, anyway, God, just one day... I almost got life in prison. I was 20 years old. I was facing 15 to life, and you're not supposed to tell because that's a street thing. So I just took my lumps, but God blessed me. Uh, I got 10 years. I did six years on the uh, 10 year sentence. But while I was there, God was able to get back, uh, you know, to talk to me. Because God, if you have to have God tap you, then slap you. If God want to talk to you, listen to him while he's trying to talk to you. Don't take it from me. Don't let him have to sit you down and, and talk to you. So when we get into your situation where you're not smoking weed and drinking, once he gets you in that little corner, we can talk to you. Mine was a cell, and it was in Phoenix, Arizona, 120-degree heat. I had a jerry curl. So believe me, that wasn't working out well. Imagine a bunch of grease on your head with the sun going like this. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. It was men kissing men. It was horrible. The food was bad. The clothes was horrible. The bed was horrible. It was just bad. So God said, well, look, what you going to do? And I looked around. I said, we're going to get a better plan than this. So you can hear the voice of God when it's necessary. He'll clean your ear out with a little something. So then I got my GED. I start going to uh, college. Chapman University, and believe me, the professor came to the jail. This was not a correspondence. The professor came to the jail, and he brought you extra homework because he think you don't work in jail. I had news for him. Yes, you do. You, they work you 10 hours a day. So I did my homework plus the jail work, so I didn't have to go to solitary confinement, which is another, it's a jail inside the jail. Ain't that something? They put, you get in trouble in jail, they put you in another jail that's already in the jail. It's a little bee box. They fit you in there. Don't worry about your size. You'll fit. So after that, I said, well, and I start back going to church and praying. And thank God I've been home 23 years. I ain't been back not one time. No matter what the devil tried to pull, I have not been back. I had a lot of other shortcomings. But God showed me visions of me preaching and praying. But I thought, not not me. I, I'm not. You can't not. No, you can't got to be somebody else. So then he showed me different things. And then finally, I was at church at a Wednesday night service. And I seen this lady doing praise and clapping and stuff. And I said to myself, look at her. She's jumping up and down praying. And God said, you going to go preach. You going to go pray. You get up there and do it. And I heard it loud in this ear right here, real loud. So I thought maybe I said it out loud and somebody heard me. And I looked to the left. It was nobody right there. So I joined the ministry the next day. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so, and now it's been since 2010 that I joined, and I have a happy life, and I try to share the goodness with other people. It's not like the goodness of the Lord. It's not no weed you're going to get it from. It's not no drugs you're going to get it from. It's no amount of money that's going to bring you the peace that God can bring you. Right now, I get such good night's sleep, it, it feel like I'm cheating. I mean, I get that kind of sleep where you go like this, and then you go like this, then you scratch your head, and you go back like this. That's the kind of sleep. If you ever had that kind of sleep, you know what I'm talking about. Peace from God inside out. You cannot beat that. So I'm really glad. When I realized God wanted to use me, look, my hand's shaking even just talking about it. When I, when I knew God wanted to use me, I just cried one day. My whole, I, my, I cried so hard my head started hurting because I couldn't believe he wanted to use me out of all the people he could have picked. But I was able to help other people that he wanted to reach that maybe other people probably couldn't get to. So I guess that's, that's what God does. He picked you for his purpose. You have to be willing to say yes. The best thing you can ever do is say yes to the Lord. Say yes to God. Even if you don't know what he's trying to tell you to do. And for those that need to know if you hear from the Lord, at the end of the conversation, if you do not wind up going to jail, getting shot at, robbing a store, then yes, you're talking to the Lord. If it ends up in something good, it's from God. So you cannot beat that. And please stay in school because school is great. Bible school, regular school. You will you will really be sad if you don't go to school. You're going to miss out and wish you did. Like me, I graduated, got my GED in jail. Do I want to go back to my uh, old school? No. It's a jail. So, no. So, I'm really glad to be here today, and I have my health, my strength. I have new friends, new brothers and sisters, different backgrounds. They have different foods, as you can tell by my you know, Physique. yeah, yes. I they have recipes, and I'm willing to try them. Hey, they, they passing out. I take it. Hey, hey, this is America. I'm not from a third world country. They have food here. So yeah, I eat all kind of different food. I be mean, you coming up? Sure. So I'm just happy for my life, and I invite those that's listening to this. If you have not gave yourself to the Lord, or you need to get back with the Lord, like I did. It's a beautiful thing. Don't worry about what you did. That's just the past. That's between you and God. You have to tell nobody else your business. Your testimony is your testimony. But if you share, it may help somebody else. But you cannot beat being with the Lord. And again, this went in a different direction. But Pastor Leanne, hey, we love you. We love you. Hey, I didn't have nothing pink. I'm sorry. I didn't have nothing pink. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a great testimony that ministers to so many people who are in jail, gang bangers. And, you know, that's where I started in prison ministry. Oh, so praise the Lord. What a beautiful testimony. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. It's nice meeting you. And listen, just, listen look, I, I'm pretending I'm the co-host because this is a beautiful co-host to have. So, hey. <laughs> Uh, you know, see how life has changed. <laughs> this is not a jail cell with Pookie and Ray Ray. You see how my life is upgraded. Amen. You see what the Lord do. You see what the Lord do. Okay. Praise <laughs> the Lord. God bless Thank you. Thank you. Bro. God bless you.